Alright, this is Wes S. Hope y'all can hear me okay. These crayons. It's a piece of paper. Just put a video out there about me building a kayak from plastic barrels. Now, I have watched no less than 30 videos of rednecks, hillbillies, engineers, everything else. Now the welders, they're cheating. They're out there using the metal metal barrels and I'm sorry but those are legitimate boats and uh, as far as I'm concerned they don't fall into the category of hold my beer and watch this. Uh, cool? Yeah. Uh, awesome factor in the hundreds. Okay. I mean they're, they're pretty kick butt. Uh, the boats that they build out of plastic barrels in uh, Vietnam and Taiwan and stuff like that. Oh yeah. Uh, I do not have a crew of people and I do not have an endless supply of free United States uh, supplied blue plastic barrels. So, and I've set myself what may possibly be unsurmountable scientific odds simply because of a thing called buoyancy and a little trick that the world uses calling call or you know boats use caused called water displacement like you got water this is purple I couldn't find a blue calm down let's say you're in some purple water here okay can y'all see that yes you can see that Alright, and we're going to make the boat, what color is this, mahogany, we're in a mahogany boat, we're, we're kicking it. Now then, if you take a canoe or a kayak, standard canoe or kayak, they are shaped basically, not to scale, like a box. You know, they may be you know they may be rounded on the corners but still okay the water displacement and buoyancy work together in that if you have water and then you put your box in here this water whatever this water is that that's in your box is being displaced by the pressure the downward pressure of gravity upon this water. Now hydrostatic pressure is working against that. Creating buoyancy. The problem is in a barrel, get some more water here, in a barrel, your boat is round. So, to displace this amount of water, you're going to be way down here. You know, you got maybe two inches of side rail out of the water to displace enough water to create the hydrostatic pressure needed to float your boat. Now then, if I rearrange the rules because right now I'm allowing myself two barrels. Which I should have wrote that in mahogany because those are our boat. It should be mahogany. It should have been this one. This crayon. I can't even keep the crayon straight. So. And I've got a canoe out here that I'm comparing my hillbilly redneck. Let's just go out there and do this to my 
schooling which was screaming in my other ear going it's not going to work dummy uh, there's ways to make it work but I would have to use something other than two barrels and if I'm going to go ahead and do that I might as well just change the number of barrels because all I got to do is change this to a three because then instead of taking one circle or well two cylinders and cutting them in half I will be taking three cylinders cutting the tops off of them and reshaping them instead of a bowl into a round bottom a rounded bottomed box thereby spreading my displacement over a wider area creating more hydrostatic pressure with the same linear feet the three barrel boat will actually be shorter than the two barrel boat but it will displace more water thereby being becoming more buoyant because of its increased ability to displace water now L Stewart agreed I don't believe that this boat was going to track for nothing I believe this boat was going to sit there and rock and rock and rock and pitch and yaw and I was going to wind up setting at the bottom of the river or it was I was going to be swimming back to shore uh, trying to hold on to my uh, GoPro now if let me get let me get a new page Y'all digging this science stuff? I don't even know why I had y'all ain't never this is peach. Um, we're gonna take peach and put it over here. That's for the person that's not in the boat yet. Right. If I take the barrel, we'll do this mahogany crayon again. Take this barrel and we'll cut it. Okay, we'll remove the end so it's a hollow tube. And then if I take and put a stressor here, and by that I mean a 2 by 4 and then apply heat. to that point right there it will allow me to spread this that way and this that way which will cause this to wind up shaped like that which oddly enough either depending on your creative working of your noodle is either a W or a butt. Either way, I now instead of my float line being way up here on my barrel, my half barrel, it will be way down here because I've taken all of this area here and brought it down into the water. So instead of having 20 inches, in theory, I should wind up closer to 28 inches. That and this little divot, for lack of a better word right here, will create a keel, a reverse keel of sorts, 
which will allow the, the boat to track better. So, hadn't even got started, hadn't even cut the first barrel. And I've already decided that uh, it could be done, but chances are it's not going to be a serviceable boat. I want a serviceable boat. But if I build this, I will be taking this to the lake. I will be taking this to the river. I'm going to be using this. If I'm going to put the time and the energy into this puppy, I've got to make it pay me back. Or I could have just, you know, saved up to 200 bucks and gone to Wild World bought me a, a kayak. So there we go. So... because of science, because we scienced this thing out, we're going to have to go from a two barrel boat to a three barrel boat. Even though I think building the two barrel boat would be an interesting project, and I believe that I could make it float I'd have to put outriggers on it to make it a viable craft. Uh, I don't want a boat with outriggers on it. I want to kayak. I want to be able to throw this in the back of my truck, drag it out of the back of the truck, throw it in the water, jump in it, paddle off. without having to worry about reading my name in the funny papers. So there you have it. Oh, let me move y'all around a bit, let y'all see my pretty face. Shot. Don't wait. Now, I'm still thinking about running out there and doing the, the two barrel but because uh, somebody told me, no, don't do it. Because I could make one better out of something else. Well, Uncle Al, I don't have big PVC out there. And those are all over the place. I have been looking for a month and a half for somebody to show me how to do this on YouTube. You know how many people have built a boat like a kayak out of a uh, a successful kayak or canoe out of plastic barrels on YouTube? If y'all find a video, y'all link it to put it in the link below. But it's gotta be American. Or, well, European world. First world. It's got to be a first world country. Let's put it that way. First world, show me anybody in a first world country that's pulled this off. I mean, I do not want to compete. In, you know, I do not want to put my ingenuity up against the ingenuity of those who hash out an existence in a third world country. I don't stand a chance. Okay, they win. But this first world stuff, we don't forgot how to do everything there is like this. So we science this out. Everybody good? Everybody know what we're doing now? Everybody understand why we're doing it? We're gonna go with three barrels. Unless I can find two of them big black barrels somewhere. See, the problem is the black barrel's a 55 gallon drum. The other one's a 33 gallon drum. So, the diameter's not the same. Therefore, the cubic inch displacement is not the same. Therefore, you run into all these issues with 
all those other colored arrows we were looking at. So yeah, there you have it. This is the crazy Wes S. Signing off, having established a plan to destroy not one, but two of his water catchment barrels in an effort to save himself two hundred dollars <laughs> and not drown. Love you, y'all still out? Don't lie. My wife doesn't like cut flowers, so if y'all want to send something to my memorial, <laughs> makes makes sure it's a lot flat. <laughs>